Hello, BookTube Nation. I'm Sam here again with A Bear and a Beat Books. And today I have for you my TBR for the 1900s to 1950 uh, readathon. And this readathon is being hosted by Katie over at Books and Things. I will link down below her announcement video for you to go check out if you haven't already. And um, she has a few challenges for this readathon, so I'll go over those with you and then I'll show you the books I have. So the first challenge she has is to read a book published from 1900 to 1950 from the country that you're from. Now, I was born in Massachusetts, so I'm American, and the book I've selected for this is Edith Wharton's Summer, and I've previously read Ethan Frome by this author, and I heard that this is kind of like a continuation or like a companion novel to that. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they're tied, but um, yeah, I had heard that and it's been on my shelves and I've been meaning to give this one a try. Um, I really enjoyed the author's writing style last time I read this, but the book was definitely a little dark, so I'm hoping that this one may be a little bit lighter for summer. The next challenge is to read a book published from 1900 to 1950 and um, from a different country from your own. And that is The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Artem. Now, I have previously watched the adaptation for this many years ago and really enjoyed it. I've read the first few pages or so of this previously and really enjoyed it. And it's just a story that I've grown to love, so it's time that I read the novel. Now, I believe that she was born in Australia and then moved to England. So either way, that counts for me. The next challenge is to read a genre classic, so something like fantasy, sci-fi, mystery, etc. For this one, I have selected Kingdom Lost by Patricia Wentworth, and this is one of the Golden Age Mysteries published by Dean Street Press, and I really have enjoyed a couple of these that I've read so far. I'm so excited that Dean Street Press is republishing some of the Golden Age Mysteries because that kind of mystery writing is what I crave. Um, I kind of took me a while to find my um, like subgenre in the mystery world that I enjoyed, but um, yeah, I love historical mystery and golden age mysteries, so I'm really excited to give this one a try. This one sounds really exciting. It's about an heiress who was marooned as a baby, and then basically her fortune, of course, has been given away, and then she comes back to society. So it's all kind of how that unfolds, and it sounds really lovely, and I'm really excited. Next is to read something from 1900 to 1950 again that is is um, all these books will be, <laughs> um, but um, that is like a short story, a play, um, something other than a novel. And for this one, I've picked up The Essential Tales of H.P. Lovecraft. I'm going to try and read maybe one or two of the short stories out of this. Um, this is my brother's favorite author, and he's been asking me to read it for so long. And I started it once, I read some of the introduction, and I enjoyed what I read, but I didn't get too far into it. So I'm going to try it again and try and get through at least one or two um, of the short stories in here. The next challenge is to read a book set during or focused on one of the world wars, so either World War I or World War II. Um, I don't have a lot of war fiction on my shelves, and the popular ones that I'm aware of um, I've already read um, at least one of them. So for this, I went online and I kind of did a little bit of digging. Now what I found doesn't get great reviews, but it sounded interesting to me. And that is Mary Postgate by Rudyard Kipling. Again, it doesn't get great reviews, but it's focused on this woman. And I believe it's a really crippling story. And it is definitely used as propaganda during the war. And I think it has to do with how her family was affected fighting in the war and how that all comes back to her. Um, it just, it sounded interesting to me. It's short. Um, I believe I'll do it on audio, on script if I do. 
and um, yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't read a lot of war fiction, so it's not something I have readily available on my shelves, but um, I believe it will um, fit the prompt, and um, if I have a chance, I'll definitely try and get to it. Now, the bonus challenge was to read something from each of the decades um, throughout, so something from the 1900s, 10s, 20s, 30s, and 40s, and so I've compiled a list of things I had on my shelves that will help me complete the rest of those challenges, plus just some things I really wanted to get to. From 1903, I have the Scarlet Pimpernel, and this is by Baroness Orxy. Um, I've been wanting to read this for a while. I've had it on my shelves. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a classic. It's one I haven't read yet. It's about a masked hero during the French Revolution, and that just sounds pretty good. So I'm excited to get to this one. I also have The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery, and this is from 1928. And this is one I've had on my shelves for a while, and I just have really wanted to get to this one. Um, I've heard so many great things about this, and it seems like the kind of cozy country story that I really enjoy. So I'm hoping to get to this one as well. Another one that I've been meaning to get to for a while now is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. And it's supposed to be kind of like a Cinderella story where a woman accidentally gets on the wrong job for the day and it kind of changes her life. Um, it just sounds lovely. I've heard so many amazing things about it and people, you hear my dog. <laughs> um, but people that really enjoy the kind of books that I enjoy seem to really love this. And this one is from 1938. So yeah, I'm really excited to give this one a try. Next is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. And this is by Betty Smith. This is another one that has long been on my TBR that I really think I will love. Even my mother has told me that this is wonderful. So it's time. <laughs> I need to give it a try. I believe it's like a coming of age story that focuses a lot on childhood and family relationships. And that's just right up my alley. Um, I believe there will be a read along for this book coming up. Um, I believe Kate Howe is involved. So um, I will leave that information linked down below. I know Katie mentions it as well. So um, yeah, this is one that I really have wanted to get to and I hope to get to it during the month of May. And finally, because I wanted one that was exactly from 1950, is Our Spoons Came from Woolworths. And this is by Barbara Commons. I've read another one of her books and really enjoyed it. So I've been meaning to get to a couple of her other ones and this is another one of her more popular books. Um, her books are short and um, I found the last one I read, I read, um, I believe it's called Sisters by a River. It was really lovely and it just kind of reminded me of some of my childhood and I really enjoyed reading it. I have a video featuring that about um, modern classics, so I'll link that down below as well. But um, yeah, so I'm excited to get to her again because I really enjoyed reading her last time. Those are all the books I have on my TBR for my 1900 to 1950s readathon. Um, Honestly, I would say if you extend that just a little bit, like if you were to say like 1880s to 1980s, it's kind of my favorite time period to read from. Um, I find that the books during that time period, some of them still feel like classics. They're easier to get through. They're quicker. Um, the topics are a little bit more relevant to my lifetime. I was born in the 80s, so sometimes it's nice to kind of have a picture of what life was like when your life was first starting out. And um, yeah, I just... I love this time period. I have a lot of modern classics on my shelves. I have more um, on my shelves that would fit um, for a lot of these prompts. So I may end up grabbing one of those as well. I don't make any promises. I am not a super good strict TBR person. I try. It's n I actually, I have a lot of fun making TBRs. Not always the best to stick to them, but I really enjoy making them. I hope you enjoy watching them. Um, you can see I gave you a little shot earlier of my new library cart. Um, maybe I'll make a video kind of showing that off, but um, I'm really bad about filming book hauls. I don't super enjoy filming book hauls because as you can see, even with this TBR, I don't always know um, a lot going into a book about what a book is about because I hate spoilers. 
So that's kind of problematic for you if I'm doing a book haul. Um, there is always a reason I buy a book. Sometimes I've read the first couple of sentences and just really enjoyed the writing style. Sometimes I've read a couple of good reviews. I do look into the books I buy now because I'm running out of space. I've never done a shelf haul on my channel. It scares me. Um, I definitely have, I probably have close to 2,000 books in my house, just being honest. Um, yeah, I have a lot. I probably have too many. Um, but I get really nervous that, <laughs> this is silly, but that I'm going to want to read something and then it's going to go out of print and then I'm not going to be able to read it. So a lot of times if I'm interested in something, I'll pick it up and then I'll put it on my shelves and I don't always get to it right away. And that's okay. I've come to terms with it, but my house is only so big, so I can only fit what I can fit. I have right now in my library, I have two large bookshelves and three small bookshelves and then like three editions. I have two like shelf and TBR cart. Well, I have one cart and one shelf. I have another two tall singles in my lounge. And in my bedroom, I have two huge book, well, one custom huge bookshelf, one big bookshelf, two skinny bookshelves, and another small bookshelf. So I'm a little out of control. Um, but I think, you know, everybody has a hobby and everybody has something that they enjoy. And for me, books really bring me joy. And until they don't, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I would like to show more of them on my channel because I've probably only shown hmm, maybe 20% of my books on my channel. So I would like to do that. Um, if you're interested in my cart, um, I got mine at Michael's as well. Um, I know a lot of people have gotten them there, but I bought the longer one. They have shorter ones there, but I bought this longer one. It was a little bit more expensive. I believe it was $49.99. And you can fit a lot of books on this card. The reason I went off on that tangent is because these are probably half of the books I need to haul on my channel. And it's a whole card. So yeah, um, maybe I'll do a book haul. I just, oh, it's awful. I like to put stuff away and I like to have it where I can see it. And I just don't always know enough about a book to do a haul. I typically like doing hauls for like birthdays or Christmas, um, which I am gonna do a Christmas haul this year, but I have read some of the books. So, well, I have read at least a short story. Um, yeah, so I do read them. I just don't always haul them, but we'll see. We'll figure out how that goes. I, when I first started my channel, I did something called shelf haul and maybe not first, but early on. And it was like, I, it was like a, a book tour or a shelf tour and a book haul mixed together because a lot of times you haven't seen the books that are on my shelves and some of them are recent purchases. So I would just go through a shelf and show you the books on there. Um, I think I filmed two of those. It wasn't super popular, so I kind of stopped doing it. But if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know. I'll link those two videos down below. Uh, they're older videos, so be kind. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'm excited. Tonight is book club night, and my little brother is the host tonight. So um, yeah, it's a lovely little book club I've started. It's put on by um, my brother's fiance, her grandmother. And so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And my brother picked, his two favorite things are Westerns and Samurais. And so he picked a Samurai book and I actually really ended up enjoying it. Um, I'll tell you more about it in my next wrap up. A little too much violence against children but it was definitely realistic. So points for realism. I'm having a pretty good reading here so far. Some definite like quality books. Um, I've been enjoying middle grade a lot, which is kind of a problem because I do own quite a few that I could get to, but I don't own as many middle grades unread as I do some other things as well as mysteries. 
Diamond Mysteries, and I probably only have about 10 to 15 of those on my shelves that I haven't read yet. So I'm really enjoying my reading year, and I hope you are too. Um, if you're new, thank you so much. Hi, I'm Sam. I just recently in April celebrated my four year anniversary. So yeah, I um, it's nice to see a few more new subscribers. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kate, for um, collaborating on that fairy tale video. That was lovely. I love fairy tales. I love mythology. I love folklore. So if you like those kind of things, you might like this channel. Um, yeah. Anyway, I hope that everyone's doing great. And I just want to thank you for being here with me today. Farewell for now. Bye-bye.